Hi, this is Chef Skip. Now let's go over Chapter 7, Hygiene and Cleanliness. Good personal hygiene is essential in any sanitation program. And probably most important to good personal hygiene is proper hand washing. Food handlers are not just the people who prepare the food. Servers and even dishwashers are considered food handlers. They either handle food directly or work with surfaces that the food will touch. Unfortunately, there are a variety of situations in which food handlers can contaminate food. They can contaminate food when they have a foodborne illness, have exposed wounds that are infected, have contact with a person who is sick, or they touch their hair, faces, or bodies and then do not wash their hands. Situations that lead to contaminating food. Touch anything that may contaminate their hands and then do not wash them. Have symptoms such as diarrhea, vomiting, or jaundice, which is a yellowing of the eyes or skin. They eat, drink, smoke, or chew gum or tobacco while preparing or serving food. They touch anything that has come into contact with human blood. To prevent food handlers from contaminating food, managers must create personal hygiene policies. These policies must address personal cleanliness, clothing, hand care, and health. Personal cleanliness is not just important for giving guests a good impression. It's an important part of personal hygiene as well. Pathogens can be found on hair and skin and are not kept clean. These pathogens can be transferred to food and food equipment, contaminating that food and equipment. All food handlers must bathe or shower before work and keep their hair clean. Dirty clothing makes a bad impression, carries pathogens, and causes foodborne illness. The following are guidelines designed to prevent food handlers from spreading foodborne illness. Food handlers should always cover their hair tie long hair back, wear a clean hat or other hair covering. Wear clean clothing every day. This includes chef coats and uniforms. Remove aprons when leaving prep areas. For example, when taking out garbage or using the restroom, change any apron that becomes dirty. Remove jewelry from the hands and arms before preparing food or when working around prep areas. Do not wear watches, bracelets, including medical bracelets or rings, except for a plain metal band. Hand washing is the most important part of personal hygiene. It may seem like an obvious thing to do, but many food handlers do not wash their hands correctly or as often as they should. Food handlers must wash their hands before they start work. They must also wash their hands after activities that are listed, like using the restroom, handling raw meat, poultry or seafood, touching hair, face or body, sneezing, coughing, using a tissue, eating, drinking, smoking, or chewing gum or tobacco. Wash your hands after handling chemicals, taking out garbage, clearing tables or busting dirty dishes, touching clothing or aprons, handling money, using a phone, and touching a contaminated surface. Food handlers must wash their hands after handling chemicals that might affect food safety as well as after touching anything else that may contaminate hands, such as dirty equipment, work services, or towels. Steps for correct hand washing. Step one, wet hands and arms with running water as hot as you can comfortably stand it at at least 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Step two, apply soap. Apply enough to build up a good lather. Step three, scrub hands and arms vigorously for 10 to 15 seconds, cleaning under fingernails and between fingers. Step four, rinse hands and arms thoroughly under running water. Step five, dry hands and arms with a single use paper towel or warm air hand dryer. The whole process should take about 20 seconds. Food handlers should wash their hands only in a designated hand washing sink. When you are done washing your hands, you can use paper towel to turn off the faucet and to open the door when leaving the restroom. This can prevent hands from becoming contaminated. Besides hand washing, hands need additional care to prevent a spread of pathogens. Keep fingernails short and clean, and long fingernails are difficult to clean. Do not wear false nails. They can break off into food and are difficult to keep clean. 
Do not wear nail polish. It can hide dirt under the nails and flake off into food. Wear a bandage over wounds in hands and arms. Make sure it keeps the wound from leaking. Also wear a single-use glove or a finger cot, a finger cover, over bandages on hands or fingers. These will protect the bandage and keep it from falling off into food. Food handlers need to use care when handling ready-to-eat food. Remember, these are food items that can be eaten without further preparation, washing or cooking. Cooked food, washed fruit and vegetable, whole and cut, and deli meat are some examples of RTE food. Using bare hands to handle ready-to-eat food can increase the risk of contaminating it. Gloves, tongs, and deli tissues can help keep food safe by creating a barrier between the hands and the food. There are specific times when gloves are not required. These include while washing produce and when handling ready-to-eat ingredients for a dish that will be cooked to the correct internal temperature. Restaurant and food service managers and owners, operators, have a responsibility to ensure that their employees do not spread foodborne illnesses. Food handlers who are sick can spread pathogens to food. Depending on the illness, they might be able to work with food until they recover. The situation. The food handler has a sore throat with a fever. Procedure. The food handler cannot work with or around food. If the operation serves mostly high-risk guests, such as nursing home, then the food handler should not be in the operation. Situation. The food handler has at least one of these symptoms from an infectious condition, vomiting, diarrhea, or jaundice. Procedure to follow. The food handler should not be in the operation. Situation. The food handler has been diagnosed with a foodborne illness and has symptoms. Procedure. The food handler should not be in the operation. Situation. The food handler has been diagnosed with hepatitis A or salmonella typhi. Procedure. The food handler should not be in the operation. We know that a food handler has to maintain good hygienic practices, but did you also know that it's important to make sure food contact surfaces are kept clean and it does not stop there. Besides being cleaned, food contact surfaces need to be sanitized. Food can be contaminated easily if equipment and kitchen surfaces are not kept clean and sanitized. Cleaning removes food and other dirt from the surface. Sanitizing reduces pathogens on the surface to safe levels. Some surfaces only need to be cleaned, such as walls, storage shelves, garbage containers. However, any equipment or surface that touches food such as knives, stock pots, preparation tables, and cutting boards must be cleaned and sanitized. All food contact surfaces need to be cleaned and sanitized at the following times. After they are used, before food handlers start working with different type of food, for example, if a food handler is prepping chicken and then switches to chopping lettuce. Anytime food handlers are interrupted during a task and the items being used may have been contaminated, and also after four hours of continuous use. Never use cloths or towels meant for cleaning food spills to clean food contact surfaces. Store cloths or towels for general cleaning in a sanitizer solution between uses. We use red buckets here. Keep towels that come into contact with raw meat, seafood, or poultry separate from other cleaning towels. Cleaners are chemicals that remove food, dirt, rust, stains, minerals, and other deposits. They must be stable and safe to use. Always use cleaners as indicated by the manufacturer's directions. Cleaners can be divided into the following four groups. Detergents, degreasers, delimers, and abrasive cleaners. Detergents are either general purpose or heavy duty. General purpose detergents remove fresh dirt and can be used on almost anything. Heavy duty detergents remove wax, dried on dirt, and baked on grease. Dishwasher detergents are an example of a heavy duty detergent. Degreasers dissolve grease and work well where grease has burned on, such as in oven doors or range hoods. 
Delimers are acid cleaners used on mineral deposits and dirt that other cleaners cannot remove. For example, they are designed to clean scaling mineral deposits such as those left by hard water, rust stains, and tarnish. Delimers must be applied carefully. Abrasive cleaners have a scouring agent that helps scrub hard to remove dirt. Dishwashers often use abrasive cleaners to remove baked on foods in pots and pans. They must be applied carefully to avoid damaging smooth surfaces. Sanitizing. Food contact surfaces must be sanitized after they have been cleaned and rinsed. Sanitizing can be done either by using chemicals or heat. Both methods have specific requirements and must be followed for the sanitizing to be effective. One way to sanitize items such as tableware, utensils, or equipment is to soak them in hot water. This is known as heat sanitizing. For this method to work, the water must be at least 171 degrees Fahrenheit. The items must also be soaked for at least 30 seconds. Be sure to check the water temperature with a thermometer. Another way to sanitize is chemical sanitizing. Tableware, utensils, and equipment can be sanitized by soaking them in a sanitizing solution. Staff can also rinse, swab, or spray items with the solution. Different types of sanitizer have different requirements for how long the items must be in contact with the solution. Be sure to read the manufacturer's directions. Three common types of chemical sanitizers are chlorine, iodine, and quaternary ammonium, also called quats. Each type has been mixed with water to create a sanitizer solution. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's directions when creating the solution. The concentration must be correct or the sanitizer will not work, and it can cause harm in high concentrations. To make sure the concentration is correct, use a test kit. These are usually available from the sanitizer manufacturer or supplier. Several factors influence the effectiveness of chemical sanitizers. Contact time. Items being sanitized must be immersed in the solution for a specific period of time. This is called contact time. The contact time depends on the type of sanitizer being used. Temperature. The water in sanitizing solutions must be the correct temperature. Concentration. Mixing sanitizer with the proper amount of water is important. The concentration of this mix, the amount of sanitizer to water, is critical. Concentrations are, that are too high can be unsafe and leave an odor and bad taste on objects. Concentrations that are too low may not be effective in killing pathogens. Dishwashing staff clean and sanitize tableware and utensils in a dishwashing machine. Large items such as pots and pans are cleaned by hand in a three compartment sink. However, dishwashers must be sure to clean and sanitize each sink and drain board before washing any items. This it is important to clean and maintain dishwashing machines frequently throughout the day. Clear spray nozzles and food traps of food and other objects. Fill tanks with clean water as needed. Make sure detergent and sanitizer dispensers are filled and use delimer to remove mineral deposits when needed. Always use dishwashers according to the manufacturer's directions. In addition, follow these guidelines. Scrape rinse or soak items before washing, pre-soak items with dried on food, never overload the dish racks, and use the correct rack for the items you are washing. Load racks so the water spray will reach all surfaces. As each rack comes out of the machine, check for dirty items. Rewash any dirty items. Air dry all items. Never use a towel or dry to dry items. Frequently check water temperature and pressure. Change the water when necessary. Equipment that comes in direct contact with food must meet certain standards. NSF International is an organization that creates these standards. The NSF is an accredited by the, the American National Standards Institute, or ANSI. NSF ANSI standards for food service equipment require that it be non-absorbent and smooth and corrosion resistant. Food service equipment must also be easy to clean, durable, and resistant to damage. A cleaning program is a system that organizes all of the cleaning and sanitizing tasks in a kitchen. 
A clean and sanitary operation is critical to a successful food safety management system. Restaurant and food service managers with the most effective cleaning programs focus on three things. Creating a master cleaning schedule, training staff to follow the cleaning schedule, and monitoring the program to make sure it works. Developing a cleaning program. To create a master cleaning schedule, first look at how cleaning is currently done. Figure out how things need to be cleaned and ways to make improvements. Next, make a master cleaning schedule, including the following information. The item that needs to be cleaned, what should be cleaned on that item, when the item should be cleaned, what should be used to clean the item, and who should clean the item. This is an example of a master cleaning schedule. You'll notice it lists the items that need to be cleaned, what, when, use, and who. Once the master cleaning schedule is created, employees must be trained to follow it. Then managers must make sure the schedule is working by checking that the cleaning is being done. Review and update the schedule as needed. For example, when the menu changes or when new equipment is purchased. The importance of making sure the schedule is followed cannot be overstated. Effective cleaning helps keep an operation free of smells, noise, pests, and messiness. It also helps prevent the transfer of pathogens from dirty surfaces to the food or clean surfaces. In addition, it helps the guests to feel comfortable and safe in your operation. How do restaurants and food service operations prevent pests such as rodents and insects from getting in? Good cleaning and sanitizing will help, but they probably will not go far enough. So food service operations need an integrated pest management program, an IPM program is a system that will prevent, control, and eliminate pest infestations in the operation. The IPM program has two parts. First, it uses prevention measures to keep pests from entering the operation. Second, it uses control measures to eliminate any pests that get inside. There are three basic rules for an IPM program. Deny pest access to the operation. Two, deny pest food, water, and a hiding or nesting place and three, work with a licensed pest control operator or PCO to get rid of pests that do enter the operation. Pests can enter an operation in one of two ways. Sometimes they are brought inside with deliveries. They can also enter through openings in the building. Prevent pests from entering by paying attention to the following areas. Check all deliveries before they enter the operation. Refuse shipments that have pests or signs of pests, such as body parts, wings, legs, etc., or egg cases. Screen all windows and vents, and check that the screens regularly for holes and dirt. Keep all exterior openings closed tightly. For example, drive through windows should be closed when not in use. Cover floor drains with hinged grates. Seal all cracks in the floors and walls with a permanent sealant. Use concrete to fill holes or sheet metal to cover openings around pipes. Even after an operation has made every effort, some pests may still get in. If this happens, work with a pest control operator to get rid of them. PCOs have access to the safest and most current methods of getting rid of pests. They are trained to determine the best methods for eliminating specific pests. PCOs are also knowledgeable about local regulations and are experts in applying, storing, and throwing out pesticides. 